So in this video, we're going to take a look at how do we plot lines and planes on stereo nets. And to remember how a stereo net works, of course another video goes over this in more detail, but you can think of the stereo net as a bowl being projected down onto a piece of paper. If we put a plane running through the middle of that bowl, that plane will intersect the outside of the bowl and produce an arc if we plot it as a great circle. And of course we can plot as a pole as well. The perpendicular to that great circle would plot in the opposite quadrant that the great circle runs through. <clears throat> and then in my plane, just to connect to strike and dip symbols, I've drew on what the strike and dip symbol would be for that. And then lines are oriented anywhere like this and they will plot on the stereo net where that line intersects that bowl and projects down. So here is the stereo net. Construction of the stereo net is covered in another video, but notice key details, north, south, east, and west. These arc lines running from north to south are called great circles, and that's what we're gonna use to trace out our great circles that represent the orientation of planes. We also have small circles, which are these where, where north and south are the center of those arc circles. Okay, so here's the goal. We're gonna make three different stereo nets. The first is we're gonna plot planes as great circles. Then we're going to plot those planes as poles or the perpendicular to those planes. And then we'll plot lines. So we'll take our tracing paper and I've already reinforced the hole with tape so it doesn't get bigger and move around, producing inaccurate results. I'm going to start out by putting north, south, east, and west on there. Some people like to draw the outline of the entire stereo net, um, but I don't do that because if we're dealing with uh, low dip or low plunge structures, that line uh, interferes with where they plot. And then I just want to do a double check to see that my stereo net is produced well, meaning the tack is right through the center. And to double check that, I can gonna just rotate my overlay 90 degrees, and I see that the cardinal directions still line up exactly where they need to. We'll do it again at 180, but we should be good just from that double check. That looks good, and that looks good all the way around. Okay. So here's our home position, and we will return to this at the end of plotting every single circle or line. Okay, 05623 is our first plane. So I'll write that down up here just so we remember it. And we know that that follows right-hand rule just by inspection. So the first thing I'm going to do is mark the strike on the outside of the stereo net, 056 is there. When in doubt of where then to rotate the tracing paper, the safe bet is always put it to north-south, right there. As you get more experience, you realize that sometimes you can rotate whatever compass direction you mark on the outside to east-west, but if you're not sure, just always put it to north and you'll be fine. The next thing you have to look at is what's our dip direction, southeast. We need to look at southeast on the tracing paper, not on the stereo net. So always look on the tracing paper, your dip direction, southeast, and then 23 degrees. So we're going to start from the outside, right at east, now on the stereo net itself and count in 23 degrees. And the heavy lines are every 10 degrees, 10, 20, and 23 is right there. 
And now you're going to trace out that great circle at 23 degrees. And once that's done, the last step, put north on the tracing paper, back to north on the stereo net, and you've drawn the great circle for this plane, 056, 23 southeast. And then what you can do is do a reality check in that, again, remember that this is a bowl, something like this. There's what the strike and dip symbol would be. We'll indicate that in just a second. But the bowl and intersecting with the plane is gonna be like this. And so it seems very simple, but it's a very powerful tool to be able to just use your hand to indicate the general orientation of structures you just plot to do a reality check. And so you can see, yep, tip direction would be down to the southeast. We see that it all looks good. <clears throat> This is typically not done, but I'm just going to show it to you to show the relationship between the orientation of this plane on the net as a great circle and the strike and dip symbol. So if you want to then see the st strike and dip symbol, we can go ahead and trace in here a strike line and then our dip direction line and there there's our strike and dip symbol as what would be seen on a map okay I'm gonna start with a fresh overlay but you can certainly put the rest of these all on the same tracing paper again start out the same way north south east west marked The next one I'll write down, south 52 east, 67 northeast. Looking at this, you will see that this is not following right hand rule. That's okay. If we know it was correctly measured, we can still plot it. It doesn't have any other problems with um, its measurement because it's quadrant so we can do the double check that it's a permissible measurement because one of the cardinal directions between the strike and the dip is different and one is the same. And so you see south is different than north and east is the same as east. So that's permissible, it just doesn't follow right hand rule. So again, mark the strike, south 52 east. If you don't know, the safe bet is always go to north south. And for doing great circles, in fact, you always have to do that. We went to south here and that's fine. But here's the key step. Dip direction is northeast. Look at northeast quadrant on the tracing paper. And that tells you now which side to draw your dip from. 67 degrees, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 67 is right there. And then trace in the great circle. Last step, north back to north. There's your plane. You can do your hand as kind of a reality check. Yes, dipping down to the northeast. That looks good. The last two planes we'll just do quickly and but we'll have a couple comments on them once we've completed them. So the next one is going to be 193.88 west and north 65 west, 02 southwest. Okay, so the first comment here. I was able to plot it quickly because I know vertical is 90 degrees, which would be a straight line for your great circle on the stereo net. 
And so when I was here, I knew 90 was right there. I'm two degrees to the west of that. And so that's going to be this here. So vertical planes plot as great circles that are straight lines on the stereo net. Let's go to this one, North 65 West, 02 Southwest. Okay, so we saw in the last one, steep or close to 90, right, are going to go through the center of the stereo net if it's plotted as a great circle and then low dip in this case two degrees plots towards the outside and I should say if it's exactly horizontal which this one isn't it's just two degrees off but it's basically tracing right around the outside of the great circle if it was horizontal it would plot as the perimeter of the stereo net so as the circle right around on the outside Okay, so that's plotting planes as great circles. In the next video, we'll do planes as poles.